So thank you for joining, Jan. We'll just start off with your brief history of your career, if you wouldn't mind. Yeah, my, my career in local government began at uh, Coffs Harbour City Council in New South Wales. Um, I worked there for eight years as a community worker Asian disabilities. But part of that role was also the management of 16 co-located community services based at what they called the Coffs Harbour Community Village, which was basically sort of a lot of like the hack services that were set up all around this lovely little courtyard. Um, a very new and innovative thing when it came in, but um, part of that role was advocating for the local area in all aspects of uh, securing services, I suppose, on behalf of council, in, ad in addition to developing business plans for those services. Uh, then I moved to Mackay in Queensland, uh, where I had my longest stint, <laughs> and commenced work at Mackay City Council uh, in originally titled Chief Community Ve Development Officer. Um, the title was changed later by the CEO to Manager of Community Development and um, I suddenly realised that I really didn't have any qualifications in management at all. So I uh, completed a graduate certificate in local government management and in 2005 completed a Master of Management degree which was fully supported and paid for by council which was lovely. And the role of Manager of Community Development later became Community Development and Libraries. Um, and also a few museums thrown in there for good measure, so about 85 staff in all, in order. Um, and then following my retirement from Mackay Regional Council, I undertook a number of contractor positions in outback councils. Uh, the main one for me was uh, Julia Creek, which is McKinley uh, Shire Council. Absolutely beautiful place to go to. I would never have done it, never have gone out there if I didn't have had the opportunity through work. Um, and I also worked at Tom Curry and my last contract position was at Isaac Regional Council uh, in a sort of caretaker role for a new position but during that time I was able to develop Council's first community engagement guidelines and toolkit which was subsequently adopted by Council which was a, a good highlight for me because they didn't have anything like that before. So yeah, that's pretty much uh, history. <laughs> Not brief but history. <laughs> So what do you enjoy doing now with your time, Jan? Uh, trying to relax, which is pretty hard because <laughs> it's always so much to do. Uh, I'm still involved with LGMA. I, I really like local government in general. I think it's it's like a, uh, an aphrodisiac in some way. You can't get enough of it. And uh, I stay involved in local government by being active on forums and participating in the annual management challenge as an observer is, is always a highlight for me. I really have always supported management challenges either as a as a, a competitor or, or a, I'm not sure what you call it, a competitor. Um, and then later on as a, as a mentor and then finally um, in the last few years an observer um, and I see the benefits so much in the management challenge, it's really great. I'm also very involved in Rotary um, and I was awarded a prestigious Paul Harris Fellow Award in 2020 which was a, a real highlight for me too. I uh, do a little bit of painting and dabbling and yeah, a little bit of reading. Um, but yeah, still, still quite involved with local government. So during your uh, career with local government, do you have role models that, that you'd like to share? Definitely. Um, I guess for me, Jeff, uh, Jeff Stewart Harris, who was Jeff Harris at the time when I was in Mackay, um, was a very transformational leader. And he was the one that got me back out to Moranbar, to Isaac's uh, council. So energetic, so full of encouragement and um, uh, forward thinking, you know, really, really good. Uh, included his, his work, his staff in things that he did and made you feel that you could achieve anything for him. And, you know, you just wanted to do it for him. So Jeff and Chris Rose, who was the CEO at Logan City Council, very much a similar sort of style and, and still very much that transformational leader. Those two leaders stand out in my mind um, over all the years I've been working in local government. And I'm guessing during your career there may have been a fair few changes that you've observed in that time? Yeah, mainly changing leadership styles with different CEOs. You know, I can recall at Mackay that we were very, very um, in the fore in our community engagement processes. Uh, to begin with, and we had a CEO, I think that was Jeff at the time, who thoroughly supported the community engagement process and, and getting the community involved in everything, including the um, the annual plan that we had to do, the annual um, plan for council. 
uh, we went out for the first time to the community and asked for their input and that had never been done before. So that was great. And then we had another CEO come along after that that didn't see the benefit of community engagement at all. So all the hard work that you'd done in the previous four years got just left on the back burner and not touched because there was just no support for that until another CEO came along and we were back doing it again because he did believe in it. So the change in leadership style for different CEOs has an impact, you know, and, and with different councils too. Now, when the councils change, uh, the different council laws and their support, and in actual fact, with, with uh, federal and state elections and changes of government, um, all of those situations, you need to be flexible and start afresh and work out how you're going to work around those changes to achieve the best benefits for the community. And there would be some highlights over your career? Yeah, there's quite a, quite a, a list that I can think of. Probably for me, uh, the ability to... Um, oh, we, we had a Safe Communities project in Mackay and uh, it was run by the World Health Organisation and I got the opportunity to present a keynote address on Mackay's first three years as a safe community to the Fifth Nordic Safe Communities Conference in Finland in 2006. Now, uh, that was fully supported. I was actually on leave and I was travelling to England, but Council supported the part of, of flying to, to Finland and presenting that paper, which was uh, wonderful because I was the only Australian there. So uh, to be able to promote what we were doing and also to be part of something like that was really magic. Um, I also participated in the LGMA Management Exchange Program and um, visited New Zealand in 2009 where I attended the uh, SLGMA conference and interviewed senior staff in four different councils to discuss community planning methodologies. Um, we were very much um, in, the, in the fore of community planning then and, and state government was really uh, insisting that councils had community plans. And Mackay had a very, very high population of South Sea Islanders in the community. And uh, I guess I wanted to find out how people in New Zealand specifically engage the Maori members of their communities so I could emulate that with our South Sea Islander community in Mackay. Um, the completion of my Master of Management degree, um, that was really a highlight for me. Um, President of North Queensland branch of QLGMA from 2010 to 2013. Um, yeah, Peter Irvine reminded me that I was one of the first LGMA members to be selected in local government mentoring program in 2010 and that was an honour and I'm still very much in touch with a couple of the people that I mentored through that program and, and really nice to see um, where they've gone and how they've achieved their goals and, and that was really good. Um, yeah, highlights, just having a long term career, I was in local government for 30 years I guess and had opportunities that wouldn't be possible in other employment sectors. Um, and also the, uh, the fact that I developed community engagement policies and guidelines for both Mackay Regional Council and Isaac Regional Council that are still being used long after I've gone. So left a little bit of a legacy and that's always the highlight. Along with highlights comes the lowlights or <laughs> the, the worst things about a local government career. Um, I guess in the role that I had, um, which was very much Know, promoting community engagement and all of that sort of um, inclusivity, I guess, of the community. Um, sometimes that wasn't supported by councillors. And I can recall one time where we had a, a training session on um, community engagement and one of the councillors turned around and said that he had been voted in by the community, so he knew what the community wanted. And this was just a load of rubbish and it was the end result that counted. Uh, and the trainer was very clear in explaining to him that it wasn't always the outcome that was important, it was the process and how we got there, it was a journey for the community. So, yeah, there, there's always that. It's a frustration, I suppose, uh, between the expectations of the community and what they want and the realities of working within a bureaucratic framework. Um, always difficult to pull, um, particularly in the community services sector. But yeah, that's not, not many lowlights, I don't think. What worked for you? Is any advice as an officer? Um, yeah, I guess for me, believing in and, and promoting a participatory management style where staff had input into decisions um, that would affect them, I felt that I was more of a central cog in a wheel rather than the top of a hierarchical structure. And I believed in, in taking my staff on the journey with me. Um, Following completion of my master's degree, I became involved in organisational training specifically based on the FISH model. Um, 
fish model was developed based on the Pike Place fish market in Seattle and it actually aimed at improving organisational culture and I managed to persuade um, my, my then uh, Director of Finance to purchase some um, fish products, I guess, and conducted training sessions across almost all of council staff. He was quite a, reluctant to spend the four or five thousand dollars at the time, thinking it wasn't going to achieve anything, but it certainly did, and also being able to do it from within to, to staff was really good. Um, great model, love the fish model. Um, as I said before, the LGMA management challenges are beneficial in getting various people across council to work together as a team, and I really um, think that they do both benefit the individual and councils, um, and I always encourage the teams to take it back to council when they finish and um, actually do a presentation to council and to the senior staff to show um, what has been learned and what has been achieved through that management challenge process and um, to be able to use that, I guess, use all of that um, knowledge that they've had um, on their return to, to council to ensure support in the future. Um, also believe in the importance of delegation. Uh, that was very evident when I became manager of libraries because I had absolutely no library experience and had to really delegate all of the library focused um, uh, stuff that came up onto the two librarians that I had at the time. and. It worked really, really well. They were very happy uh, to be given that role. They hadn't had that role before and uh, to delegate that sort of stuff to them and then they could delegate stuff down to their staff. So that was really good. Um, yeah, importance of delegation, yes. I think that, that puts the responsibility onto other people and gives them a purpose as well. Was there anything that you had to change about yourself or your approach along the way in your career? Um, no, I don't think I'd change anything about my journey. I, I thoroughly enjoyed my, my time in local government, but I think I'd need, <clears throat> need to be more aware of how to deal with others who may not have that same management style, particularly those who could be described as autocratic. Um, it was difficult when I first started in Mackay because even though there were 30-something managers, only two of those were women. So you had to sort of really change your style to... Uh, not change your style completely, because I, I try to stay how I was, true to myself. But you have to realise that they sometimes don't think the same way as you do, so you have to be aware of that. Um, juggling community expectations with the realities of council's budget and direction, uh, that's difficult. And working with new CEOs and councillors who've had new and different pathways and ideas. Uh, I, I guess for me, one of the presentations that I used to do with community development workers and staff across, you know, across Queensland in my old GMA role was to encourage them to believe that they're going to be there for a long time and councils change. So, you know, don't get disappointed or deflated if council doesn't uh, approve of something you're doing. As I said before, you just put it on the back burner and you bring it out at a later date. Um, and you're, you're still going to be there, so you have to be true to yourself. So do you have any advice to newcomers who are um, entering local government? Depending on where you're sitting, I guess, in local government, whether you've got some sort of power of uh, convictions that you can use. Um, in the area that I was in, which was community development, it was very easy to have very high aspirations of what you wanted to do and the things you wanted to do in the community. And sometimes councillors didn't quite see it from your point of view. So all I can say to newcomers is if you get the opportunity to realise your dreams and your ambitions, then don't hide them away because councillors don't actually agree with you at this time because probably those councillors aren't going to be there forever and if you are then the next lot of councillors will come on board and probably take on board what you're thinking about as well so never give up your values and your dreams just hang on to them also don't be afraid to put yourself out there if you get the opportunity to do something within local government even if it's outside your your sphere of knowledge or your area of interest do it because um, that's the best way to get recognized and to have your job have some specific, specific meaning for you um, what other things can i suggest you do as a newbie 
um, listen, you know, take advice from people that have been around a lot longer than you. Um, sometimes counsel can be difficult. You've got the conflict between what the, uh, the community wants and needs and whether the council can actually provide it or will provide it. Um, so don't be afraid to, to you know, be amongst that conflict and try to get the, uh, the community's point of view across to councillors. And sometimes you have to do it the other way as well and, and back the council that you're working for. Do you have any advice to um, prospective CEOs that are coming into local government or that have transitioned from other local governments? I guess for me the first thing would be to tread slowly. I've had CEOs that have come into councils where I've worked and have completely changed everything, have had restructure after restructure, uh, have gotten people off on the wrong foot by the way that they've done things. So I think that any new CEO has to tread very carefully, has to learn what his managers or his, his staff are capable of doing, find out what their skills are, utilise those skills to the best advantage of, of the CEO, obviously. Uh, it's surprising who you'll find um, hiding in the depths because they've never been given opportunities to do something. So, yeah, just, just tread slowly. Um, have really, really good communication skills and inclusiveness. Um, staff like to be treated um, you know, the way that they like to treat people, and that's to include them in things and, and be inclusive of decisions that are made. Thank you.